Hi right, guys, today I want to talk about the correlation coefficient. I've kind of been talking about it and I've given you a sense of <clears throat> what a positive correlation and a negative correlation looks like. Um, but now let's deal with the nitty-gritty of the calculations. Um, so um, I put the formula down here on the left side. You can see on the left here <clears throat> and that you'll typically see if you type in correlation coefficient and you look for the formula, you'll typically see that one or some version of that, you know, might multiply through terms or whatever, but uh, it'll be basically that. And what you'll notice all of a sudden is that there are X's and Y's. And remember in my previous video, I exhorted you to um, think of both continuous variables as Y's. And so you might ask why uh, they've given you X's in these formulas. Because isn't that an independent variable and why is a dependent variable? Yeah, I mean, it kind of is. So I'll tell you the reason they're doing that is because the subscripts are easier. People, um, however, forget that psychologically people will think of the X as an independent variable and the Y as a dependent. So if we were to include the subscripts, what would it look like? I think it would look like this formula. So if we have two codependent variables, right? Um, we're looking at the association of them and we want to treat them equally, we would have to um, look at observation i for variable 1 and subtract it from its mean and multiply that by the deviation of uh, variable 2 from its mean. And when we um, uh, write the formula this way, it just has more subscripts. It's a little harder to see what you're talking about than if you look at this formula over here. But this is probably philosophically more in keeping with um, the way I want you to be thinking about um, correlation. For now, I'm going to erase this. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and use the uh, X and Y version for the moment. Um, anyway, um, let's, let's do a correlation. So we're going to use that formula on the left there. And I'll get my pen back, and I'm going to do a nice KISS data set here for you where our two variables, y1, observation 1, is um, 1, and x1, sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I know you're educated now. You know this doesn't mean one's independent and one's dependent. And y2 is 3, and x2 is 3. Now, if you look at those two points, you can see there's a really nice correlation, right? <laughs> so what does the R value turn out to be? Okay, well, let's look at it. So very quickly, um, we take the summation uh, across all I. We're going to add together. Let me just erase this a second here. Okay, we're going to add together the um, product of the deviations from the means. So y1, 1, minus the mean. What's the mean of 3 and 1? It's 2. How easy. And we're going to multiply that by the deviation of x from its mean, 1, uh, minus. What's the mean of 1 and 3? Oh, it's 2, right? So we get a negative 1 times a negative 1. We're going to have to sum across the other observation. So here's observation 1. And here's observation two. So you could think of this as being, you know, two traits on one individual and then the same two traits on another individual. So we have three minus two, okay, three minus the mean of these two times three minus two. Okay, so you can see there, these observations here are varying together up and down perfectly, all right? So, you know what? I'm not even going to calculate the denominator. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Because, well, I could oh, go ahead and calculate it for you. All right. Let's go ahead and do it. Um, the numbers are so easy. All right. So, we're having the square root of the deviation of the sum of the deviations of the first observation from its mean. Okay, quantity squared. All right, um, we're, and we're summing, remember, plus the second deviation, quantity squared. And we're going to multiply that by 
the first deviation of the y1 variable from its mean, uh, let's see, are that, yeah, that, the, should I do that right? So you have 1 minus 2 quantity squared plus 3 minus 2 quantity squared. I may have gotten those backwards, but whatever, it's the same number, so you know that. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we have 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 2, that's minus 1 times minus 1. What's minus 1 times minus 1? That's 1. And then we have 1 times 1. That's 1. Okay? And then we have the square root of 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1. I'm just doing this in my head here, right? Equals 2 divided by the square root of 2 times 2, 4 equals 2 over 2 equals 1. And we already knew that was going to be the answer, right? Because um, we have a perfect correlation, and it's a positive correlation. The bigger y1, um, the bigger y2. And the smaller y1, the smaller y2. In fact, they're the same numbers. Okay, so it's a perfect correlation. Um, I'm going to leave it to yourself, by the way, to do uh, this different uh, example, but I want to prove it. I want you to prove to yourself um, that this and this will also give you r equals 1. Okay, so go ahead and do that, but that and that will also give you r equals 1. By the way, this and this will also give you r equals 1. In fact, if we just have two points and they have sort of what looks like a positive relationship between them, r will be 1. When that disappears is actually if we had this point, 1, 1, and 1, 3, then we don't get r of 1 anymore. What would we get? Okay, so you guys figure that out. All right. Um, now what I want to do is look at the opposite situation. So let's say we have 1, 2, 3. Oh, that's right, I'm calling that x, aren't I? And we are y. Okay, one, two, three. What if I have the opposite situation? I have this. It looks like a negative correlation, right? What do we predict that's going to be? Your answer. Minus one, right? It's going to be minus one. It's a negative correlation. It's a perfect negative correlation. Okay, so let's apply the formula. Okay, so we have the deviation of this point. So what is this point? One, three. 3, 1, and so we have the deviation of this point, 1 minus 2 times the deviation of the y value, 3 minus 2, plus, right, we're going to sum across um, these deviations, 3 minus 2, times 1 minus 2, all right? And we already know what the denominator is going to be. Oh, let's go ahead and do it, right? We can do that. All right, so it's going to be um, x1 minus x squared, so 1 minus 2 quantity squared plus we have... Um, x2, 3 minus 2 quantity squared, and that all is multiplied by this summation. Um, the first one here, y1, 3 minus 2 quantity squared plus y2, 1 minus 2 quantity squared. All right, so what do we get? The numerator, 1 minus 2 is so minus 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Okay, so we have minus 1 plus a minus 1, all divided by the square root of 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 equals minus 2 divided by the square root of 4 equals minus 2 divided by 2 equals minus 1. 
So there's a negative correlation. It's a perfect negative correlation. So we've kind of proved here with these perfect examples that R must always fall between 1 and minus 1 because as soon as we start adding other points, it's not so perfect, right? And we're going to break that down. And even if it's still a net negative, um, you know, something with all these points would be like an R of minus 0.23. Um, it's not perfect anymore. It's not a perfect correlation. We have a lot of scatter in the points. And the question becomes, is R significantly different from zero? And this is where we use our analyze menu and jump. If we're using SAS jump, use analyze menu, multivariate. And from multivariate, you'll choose correlation. And it will produce a correlation matrix of however many um, variables you want. It'll produce R values and it will give you P values associated with that R value to test whether and the R is significantly different from zero, testing the null hypothesis. All right, so there we go. We've become more familiar with R. I do recommend that you do um, you know, a KISS data set that's not so perfect. You know, maybe have one, one, three, three. Uh, you still keep the numbers simple, right? Um, two, one. <laughs> um, so I'm drawing the numbers here. One, two, three. Um, one, two, three. And maybe two, two. Okay, so you've, you've wrecked it a little bit. <laughs> You might want to try a correlation that looks with numbers something like this. Um, and there's my bird. Carolina Wren. Okay. So you might want to try an imperfect correlation like this and show how then the numerator of our formula over here, right there, becomes less than the denominator. And that's why it will be um, less than an R of 1. In this case, it still looks kind of like a positive correlation. We sort of squint and we see that our, if we draw an oval around these things, it's kind of slanting up to the right. That would suggest positive. And if we had a smattering of points that kind of looked like that, that would kind of suggest a negative. And in fact, SAS jump draws these nice ovals around our points, and those are sort of 95% of our points should be within those ovals. Okay, um, great. Play around with SAS jump and any other program for which you can calculate correlations. And I hope now, with the nitty gritty understanding of what exactly R is in terms of its calculations, um, you'll be able to use correlation appropriately and actually understand at a deeper level what the number means. <clears throat> um, do keep in mind, x does not mean independent here in this formula. We really should be using two y's in this formula, but you never see it that way in books, so c'est la vie, we'll deal. Have a good one.